Welcome to the first episode of How to Make a Game Like Cannibal. If you're unfamiliar, Cannibal is one of the original auto-running, one-touch mobile games. Probably the first that I can remember that spawned this uh, auto-running, basically, genre. It had so many games, even, even a damn Mario game. And even though it's been cloned and copied into oblivion, it still stands out. Go and play it if you haven't. It's even been ported to Commodore 64, if you old-timers want to break that one out. So, the idea with this short series is to get the best of its game mechanics implemented, and let you take it from there. So strap in. So the first thing we have to do to make this game is to make the perfect jump. Cannibal only has one game mechanic. Jumping. And it does jumping really well. Like, it nails it, right? So we're going to have to at least try and do the same thing, right? Get really close. So I'm going to show you how to make a really badass jump, and it's going to and it's going to actually be really easy. All right, so let's get started. My scene is already set up a little bit. I have my main camera. It has a larger size, so we get more of a zoomed out view, so we can see a lot more in the game at a time. I have this aspect ratio locked at 16 by 9, and my camera's position is set up in a way so that the bottom left corner is 0, 0. It's not necessary, but it makes some of the math a little easier to calculate later on. All right, so the first thing we want to do is drop in a player so we can see some stuff going on, right? Let's get our square sprite created, call him player, and let's put him where we might think our player would start from when they're running. Right over here looks good. Okay. All right, let's add a component. It's going to be a new script, and we're going to call this player also. All right, let's open it up. All right. So, for jumping, for the simplest jump possible, we'll need a couple of things, right? We'll need uh, some gravity. We'll need some velocity. That's actually going to be a vector 2 because we'll need some uh, horizontal velocity later also. Go ahead and call this velocity. And we'll need a ground height. Basically, where we're going to land. We're going to change this later, but right now this is the simplest way to get a jump working, right? We're going to have a ground height. We're going to set it to something like 10. I don't know exactly where that is. Where's the player right now? He's at 9.2. So yeah, 10 is fine. Put him above that. Oop. There we go. All right. Um, and then we need to know whether or not this player is on the ground. So we'll need a Boolean yes or no to say is grounded. We're going to have our update here, but we're only going to use our update for inputs. And when we're doing our movement, we're going to use fixed update. The reason we use fixed update is because Unity has this concept of time dot delta time, which is the time in between the last frames, right? So fixed delta time is the time in between the last two fixed updates, and that's always the same, which means this is basically almost like a, a locked frame rate, right? That that we want to use, and we want to do this because we want our jumps to always be the same and to be predictable, right? Because we're going to actually be calculating those later in order to say how far can we jump, how high can we jump, in order to actually randomly generate things. Let's actually get ourselves jumping. The only time we can actually jump is when we're on the ground, so... Whoops. If grounded, then we're going to allow for an input to be pressed, and that input is going to be... I'm going to use the space bar. Simple enough get key down. We're going to do it right on key down. So as soon as that player presses that button, right? And then we're basically going to say is grounded is false. And I forgot one thing. Jump velocity. How 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 strong do we want that jump to initially be, right? Um we're going to set our velocity to be that jump velocity, right? All right, so now that we're theoretically off the ground, let's make ourselves go up and come back down. But it only happens when we're not grounded. I forgot, we're gonna need the position variable. This is what I usually do when I have something that's moving around. I just grab its position at the beginning of the update and 
apply the new position at the end of the update. And the position variable is what I end up screwing around with the entire frame, the entire update call. All right, so we're gonna adjust our position, our Y position by our Y velocity. Maybe a plus equals there. And we're gonna multiply by our fixed delta time. And then we're gonna take our velocity and we're gonna change it by our gravity, also by fixed delta time. So that's essentially saying, I'm gonna increment my player's position every frame of the game, but also I'm gonna adjust how much the next frame that's able to get adjusted, right? So I'm gonna take gravity and I'm gonna pull back my velocity so that the next frame, my position gets updated by a smaller velocity, a smaller and smaller velocity until I reach the arc of my jump where my velocity is zero. And then gravity is gonna make my velocity go negative and then larger and larger values of negative. So I'm gonna start falling and falling faster and faster and faster. All right, and the last thing here is that if position.y is less than or equal to our ground height, this is like our simplest form of collision detection possible to know if we collided with the ground, right? We're basically gonna write some code to make us land. So position.y is equal to ground height, just in case it was less. And then basically ground ourselves so that none of this code happens anymore. All right, let's test it out. Let's watch it work. Not working. That is because we're above the ground, we're not grounded, and we can't fall because there's no gravity. So that's some gravity. 100, there we go. I meant negative 100. Let's come back down, please. Is it coming back down? It is. All right, finally started coming back and we're gonna land pretty hard here. Boom, there we are. And we're gonna try to jump and there is our jump. How do you like that? Not too bad. The only thing I don't like about it is that it does feel a little bit floaty, right? What I mean by floaty is that it's just, I think it's self-explanatory. You're just kind of like waving up in the air a little bit. It looks really short, but the way it feels to me, I want my jump to have like a punch, right? Like right at the beginning and then have such a strong gravity that it like pulls you back down. You actually like feel the forces in the game. So that's what I want. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna set this jump velocity at 50, right? And then, so I'm jumping higher, but now I got even more floatiness because my gravity can't compensate, right? So I'm gonna go 400. There we go. You feel how that's pulling you back down, right? So now that's good. I like that a lot. Yeah, and I want my initial my initial jump to just have that, just that tiny amount of height to it. So I can just jump over an obstacle. Let's actually add those values back because I was during play mode. 400, uh, not ground height, jump velocity 50. Okay, so the next thing in our perfect jump, right? We got the jump working, but it's not perfect, right? Because there's other things to take into account. During the game, when, when you got enough speed going, your jump can go crazy high, right? Because the game takes advantage of that, that thing in your brain where you're like, if I hold the jump button down longer or harder, if I press it harder, it's gonna go faster, right? So we're gonna code it in so that the player can actually do that. The most basic form of this is just to say, is the player holding down the jump button? Is holding jump right? And by default, they never are, right? So all of a sudden, if key is down, yeah, you're holding the jump button, and you're going to be holding it until, until that key comes back up. Once the space key is back up, this holding jump equals false. So while you're holding the jump, you're basically saying you're unable to fall. You're just going to keep getting higher and higher and higher until you let go of that jump button. And then all of a sudden gravity can do its work in pulling your velocity down. So what we're going to do is say gravity only works if you're not holding the jump button. Right? Let's watch that work. Okay. Looks good. And then I let go. So I basically, 
I can manipulate this as much as I want, right? I can do like a tiny jump if I just tap it. That gives me like my minimum jump. And then if I want that big jump, I can hold it a little longer, get some bigger jumps and then hold it basically indefinitely. And I can get as high of a jump as I want. So that's kind of nice. But we don't want the player just like flying through the entire level by holding down the jump button. The game wouldn't work. So we basically have to say, yeah, you can hold down the jump button, but not that long. There's a maximum amount of time you're allowed to hold it. And after that time passes, well, gravity's gonna start working anyway. So all we need to do is say, max hold jump time. And we're gonna set that to something pretty small actually, like 0.4, because one second is actually a really long time. You can play around with these numbers, but one second is a long time to be jumping. And then just a timer to keep track of how long we've been holding it down. So if we're holding the jump, we want that timer to increment, right? So let's do that up here, if we're not grounded. If holding jump, hold jump timer, adding on fixed delta time. And then if hold jump timer is greater than or equal to max hold jump time, then basically we're not holding jump anymore. We're gonna force their finger off the button even if it's still being held. there you go right oh and then you know the timer is still incremented so every time I land reset that jump timer so that I can do it again the next jump bad 0.4 seconds see how high that is it's even like that almost seems like too long of a time but I guess if I'm going that fast I want to be able to jump that high sure why not and I can still do my tiny jumps all right, last point I wanna make is, when I was uh, newer to game development, is most, most players don't really think about, most, most players, most players do think about it. Most game developers don't think about it uh, when they're first starting out, and that is like, when a player is trying to perform an action, you gotta give them the benefit of the doubt that they did it perfect when they think they did it perfect. So if I'm, if my player here is coming down and down and down and down and down, and he's like one frame away from the ground. Technically, if I press jump during that frame, nothing's gonna happen. And then he's gonna hit the ground, and then it's gonna take you an entire extra lifting your finger and pressing the button again to get the jump going. And that can get annoying to players, and they're gonna think that there's something buggy with your game that the jump doesn't work right, when really human beings aren't computers and they can't know that the perfect frame that the player actually hits the ground, right? So we're gonna give them benefit of the doubt. We're gonna create a threshold that says, if they're close enough to the ground, well, damn it, they, they're allowed to press the button. They're allowed to press the jump button. All right, so we're gonna come up with what that close enough is. Um, this is gonna be like jump ground threshold. We're gonna set it equal to one. And then I think that's all we need. All right, so here in our update, when we're actually checking whether or not we're pressing the jump button, right? So we're saying, are we grounded, right? So we really wanna say, are we grounded or are we close enough? So let's grab our um, position. And we wanna know the difference between what the ground is and what our position is. So, and we don't wanna do negative numbers, so we're gonna do um, the absolute value of that going to be position.y minus ground height, right? What's the difference? Ground distance, right? And we basically say, or ground, ground distance is less than or equal to that threshold, right? That jump ground threshold. And that way, if we're still at like a very small height above the ground, we're still allowed to press the jump button. I don't know if you can tell if I'm hitting it. Let's see. I set it to one, so we got one unit here. That might be like not enough. So let's, let's do like two here, do three, hit save, <laughs> three. Yeah, you can kind of see that I did it there. And we also want to make sure to reset those variables as well. Like not just when we're hitting, let's do this on um, this whole jump timer. 
Let's do this on jumping and not on landing. Because I can jump to, I can actually jump before I land, right? It looks like I'm getting it. Like I'm, it feels like I'm doing it just before it lands. And I can kind of see it. Yeah, I saw that one was just above. Okay, so that's good. That's actually good. All right. Hey, look at that. We're done. That's our perfect jump. I mean, look at this thing. It's pretty badass, right? It's a 2D jump. You can take it and put it in any 2D platformer. I mean, we don't have the collision detection yet. That's coming. This is like this is pretty solid, right? And you don't even need you don't even need like a rigid body or anything like that, right? You don't need this. What look look what's happening. I don't know what's happening now. What is this physics? Yeah, we basically wrote the physics code ourselves. I mean, all this stuff, gravity, that's your acceleration, velocity, your position. This is basic physics mechanics. And that's all you need to make a 2D platformer jump. And you can fine tune these values to make this jump anything you want it to be. And that's that's where the power comes from. All right, we're on the road to making a game like Cannibal. And we got our perfect jump. All right, in the next episode, we're going to be going over actually gaining, having the character, the player, gain speed over time and gain distance over time. And we're going to have our distance score displaying in the top left corner, top right corner, something like that. And that's going to be awesome. I hope that you learned something. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give the video a like, subscribe. In just a few short episodes, we'll have a very basic version of the entire game. Peace out, everybody.